Hi, I'm Ryan with Axis New England, and today we'll be looking at how to configure the Ares controller with a servo motor right out of the box. The Ares controller combines the brains of the ACR line of multi-axis controllers in a single axis package backed by the proven power of the Ares digital servo drive. For this demonstration, we will also be using a Parker BE 23 frame servo motor. In addition to the motor, we're also going to need a motor power cable, motor feedback cable connectorized for the Ares drive, AC power, an Ethernet crossover cable or hub, and a PC with ACR view installed. We'll also need to connect the cables to the motor, connect the feedback cable to the drive, making sure not to connect the motor power until we are fully configured, and we're also going to need to make sure we connect AC power to the drive. Once the drive is plugged in, the red and yellow LEDs will alternate, indicating that the controller is booting up. Once it's ready to go, we can connect an Ethernet crossover cable to our PC and the other end to the Ares controller. At this point, we should look at the front of the controller to determine our IP address. The rotary dial only changes the last three digits, which in our case would be .001. Now we'll configure our PC to have a static IP so we can communicate to the Ares controller. First, we'll right-click on Network Status in the toolbar and select Open Network Connections. This will open our network connections where we can right-click on our local area connection and select Properties. Scroll down in the list to select Internet Protocol TCP IP and hit Properties. At this point, we can highlight Use the following IP address and enter an IP address where the first three octets match our controller's IP. We'll need to make sure that the last octet does not match to our controller, so we can choose anything except dot .1. In this case, I will choose dot .50. Also, make sure the subnet mask is the default of 255.255.255.0. Then, click OK, and then close. Now that we've set up our Ethernet communications, we can open up the ACR View software. I'll create a new project and name it My Axis and click OK. This brings up a menu where we'll need to choose our controller, which in this case is the part number for the Ares CE. Select this and hit Next. I'll leave the controller alias as the default, but you can change it if you like. Once you're done, hit Finish. This will bring up the communications dialog. Enter the IP address of your controller in the box next to Ethernet. In our case, it's the default so we won't need to change it. We can just hit connect. Now you can see the message window should display text confirming that you've connected to the controller. We're now online with the Ares controller. Our next step will be to configure the drive. If we expand the configuration wizard and click axes, we'll see our one axis along with its alias. After hitting next, we'll come to the master configuration screen where we'll need to select the units for our master. In this case, we'll select rotary units because we don't have any drive mechanism. We can disregard the rest for now and hit next. This opens the Axis Drive Slash Motor Configuration. Here, we can import a configuration from the disk or from the drive, but we'll create a new one by selecting our motor part number from a series of drop-down menus. We're using a BE 23 frame, 2 stack, D-winding, J encoder feedback option. And we don't have the motor mounted to anything, so we'll select no heatsink and then hit next. There's some thermal sensor options on this screen, but we can just hit next to use the default values. Now that we've finished the configuration, we can save it to disk, but I'll just download it to the drive. In a real application, I'd recommend saving a copy for backup. Once the download is complete, we can move on by hitting next. This window lets you modify the axis scaling of units by defining the mechanical transmission of the axis. Since we just have a standalone motor, we can use the default of 1 to 1. We can also leave the next screen at default, but you're probably going to want to revisit it at some point in order to define home and limit switches and other options. We can skip through the next three screens, which are the servo tuner, jog home limit screen, and the memory allocation. All of those can be left at default for now. Lastly, we'll come to the finish screen, where we'll download the full axis configuration to the controller. 
we'll want to make sure that download configuration as well as download defines are checked and that the checkbox is highlighted for save configuration and programs to flash memory. Then hit OK and wait for the download. Now that the configuration is finished downloading, we can test run the motor. Under the project workspace, we'll expand the tools menu, then expand jog teach panel to select axis zero. This will bring up an interface to let us jog the motor. If we click enable, you should be able to see the drive LED go from red to green and hear the internal contactors engage, indicating that the drive has been enabled. Once the drive is enabled, we can click jog positive or jog negative and watch the motor move. The encoder position is displayed in the top portion of the jog panel, and you should note that it'll increase or decrease depending on the direction you're jogging. Now that we've gone through the full basic setup, we can confirm that the drive and motor are working as expected. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please send us an email and be sure to visit us on the web at accessne.com.